Although employment discrimination is illegal, it is still pervasive, and it's likely to get worse. Title VII is a profound piece of legislation that came out of the struggle in the civil rights movement to ensure that discrimination based on your race, based on your gender, based on your religion would not prevent you from utilizing your maximum potential, either in work and housing. This report is critical because we need to elevate this reality in the work that we put into ensuring fair wage laws, we have to put behind fair hiring laws. Discrimination uh, is commonplace. We did surveys of wor uh, worker advocates, uh, many of whom said that some types of, of, of discrimination, both intentional or unintentional, um, occur frequently or even our daily reality in their, their, their industries. I think that when you look at the legal standards uh, that require for workers to prove discriminatory intent, I think that that standard might have worked in the previous decades when employers weren't as savvy in uh, their employment practices when it came to hiring workers of color or hiring women or LGBTIQ people. It's increasingly hard um, for workers to be able to prove um, discrimination based on race um, and gender and sexual orientation. Some workers have been able to win legal victories after months or even years of fighting. But there are far too many barriers to success, including finding a lawyer who will front the considerable costs involved in bringing a case, particularly for low-income workers. Employers often require employees to waive their rights to sue with forced arbitration clauses that typically benefit the employer. In the last decade, the Supreme Court has made it easier for judges to dismiss workers' cases before the pretrial discovery phase, when their lawyers can gather the best evidence. How do we make a demand um, to go beyond traditional local hiring policies, to go beyond traditional project labor agreements, to put a racial justice agenda on the table around ensuring that this industry that has historically excluded black folks and women um, in Los Angeles, you know, make sure that this opportunity become an opportunity for black workers and their families. As part of our research, we've identified these solutions. Consumers who care about racial, social, and economic justice have to wield their individual and collective power to publicly reject discriminatory employers and to support those advancing racial equity. Legal and labor journalists and researchers can foster racial equity by investigating the racial outcomes of EEOC cases to help ensure employers are being held accountable. Local governments and individual companies should require more robust collection and monitoring of workforce racial demographics at multiple stages of the employment process. If consumers come together and start asking um, at the restaurants they go eat. And if they start asking those questions, like why does your front of the house look different than your back of the house? Or wh what is the composition, the racial ethnic composition of your management team, of the folks who are getting the highest wages? We know that that can change the way the industry runs. The fear that I have is in the inaction. The fear that I have is the timing that we have to really rethink and, and organize and present and move and mobilize a new strategy to combat um, this very visceral and um, profound power of fear and hatred that now is in our executive office and in our executive branch. For more details on what reforms we need to promote racial equity in employment, either by improving our existing reactive system of protection or by adopting more proactive methods, go to RaceForward's website and download the report.